The Howard Stern Show. Early on in your career, you made a statement that you were insecure about your singing voice, which shocked me. I think, you know, this singing voice of yours is so <laughs> identifiable and original. Yeah, well, yeah. And yet yeah. that probably scared you because you didn't sound like the singers of the day. You were so different. Did well, you, you know, Bob Dylan didn't sound like Caruso either, as he pointed out. So, you know, like, it didn't matter to me too much. It was just like, oh, well, this is my voice. And I started singing, and uh, and people were, you know, snickering or, you know, going, just stick to the guitar and stuff. And, and you, I took you it didn't as buckle. a positive. You didn't buckle, though. You didn't say, <laughs> no, did you, was I mean, what am I going to do? This is what I sound like. I can't do anything It else. never occurred to you, I need somebody else to do? sing this song, but, because but a you, lot of people do that. Right. Would no, you? it occurred to a lot of other people that we should find <laughs> someone else to sing it. So school. I, I, everybody had it covered for me. Yeah. All I did was keep on going. <laughs> School was kind of like a disaster for you. you like tenth grade, you, you didn't know how to do French. You couldn't. You couldn't speak French. And you did you flunk out of high school? Yes, I you did. did. I, so you never finished? No, I didn't. Wow. Gee, you should go back. You'd be so successful. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Give it a shot. Yeah. So, so when you can't do high school, you decide, hey, that's it. My career is going to be music, and and you knew right then and there that you were going to go off and become a musician, right? Mm, kind of. Right. My my. Uh, my principal told me that I, you know, that it was a fly-by-night thing, that it wouldn't last long, and I had to be serious about my life and what I was doing. <laughs> and, uh, Everybody and I gets said, that. Well, you know, that that's, I want to play in a club. I said, I want to play in a nightclub. That's really what I want to do with my life. And the first band you 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 formed was the Minor Birds. And, well, one of the first. And that was with... I, I still can't believe that you ended up in a band with Rick James as the lead singer. That was your band, right? Yeah, Ricky was out there. Rick James. And was he a bad influence on you? I'm talking about drug-wise and introducing well, you to that yeah, world. I wouldn't say he was a bad influence. He was an influence. Right. Uh, definitely. And, and I'm still here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you know... And why didn't the band with Rick James work out? What happened? It what? did work out. It did. It was a great band. It, you know, it encountered some legal issues at one point when we went down to Motown. And we played at Motown, and we recorded down there, and that was great. And we had the, uh, you know, we were singing and playing. We played our tracks, and everything was nailed down in the room. The drums were nailed down where they were. The bass was right where it was. Nobody moved anything. And so we jumped on and started playing, and... They were fascinated that I was playing this, uh, these kind of riffs, kind of Floyd Kramer guitar pulls and stuff on a, on a, uh, in a kind of an R&B groove, you know. And it was like, they were looking at me like, what's that? Right. And uh, but we played and we had a blast, just really great playing in there. And then the like the Four Tops or the, uh, 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 you know, the Temptations or somebody or some combination of these bands, the guys would just come in and start singing over our shoulders. Wow. So we'd be singing in our background parts, recording them, and suddenly we got really big <laughs> and, a more, and much more rhythmic. Yeah. Uh, how, we do they, like how do those guys How do those guys end up in the room with you? This like, That's like, just the Motown way it works. It that it's way. a family. And Rick James must have been like 16 years old. He must have been a young kid, right? Yeah, I mean, you, we, none of us were over 20 at that time. That's unbelievable. And, and you guys lived together. You actually lived with Rick James during those years. Yeah. That had to be insane. Wow. Yeah, uh, Rick, yeah. Rick, <laughs> Ricky and I lived on Isabella Avenue in an apartment on the basement of the apartment building. And, and uh, yeah, we did some wild things in there. I, so it was all very hazy to me now. Because I'm what? glad that I made it through that stage. That was a little dicey. Because best. of drugs. There were there were some drugs going on there. I remember singing a song for about a day and a half, <laughs> and yeah. I still can only remember that one part that I sang over and over again. I never finished it. I just got to a certain point, you know, with it, and then you just got stuck and got it in it. But you know, you're so loop. not you're so nonchalant about these things. Smokey Robinson was helping you record at that time. I mean, the great Smokey Robinson. You're you're in a band with Rick James. That's pretty. That's pretty Heady remarkable stuff, stuff right? Yeah. I mean, it really is when you look well, back on your Ricky, life. Well, Ricky, Ricky is just a kid. I mean, you know, he was just a draft dodger. He was up in Toronto, and he was trying to stay away from uh, what he was running from. And the Howard Stern Show.